Hello and welcome to episode 136 of the Sock Bunny Knit and Fit video podcast. My name is Kimberly, also known as Sock Bunny, and I'm recording in sunny Florida in the United States of America. The high today here is probably going to be about 96 degrees Fahrenheit, so summer is here even though it's still spring. And I tried to get Pumpkin to be on the podcast, but he's not feeling well this morning. He actually threw up a little bit, and he's not eating, so I think he's just got an upset stomach. So he was not cooperating with being on the podcast. So that's okay. Maybe next time. Um, I am Sock Bunny pretty much everywhere on the internet, um, but I've really narrowed down where I uh, post and spend my time and I've been getting a lot more knitting done so I uh, I'm not on Facebook anymore and uh, I'm not on Google Plus anymore and a few other places but I am still Sock Bunny on Ravelry Instagram and Twitter so um, I don't post a lot to Twitter but I do uh, I use Twitter mostly for Sims I follow like the Sims and some of the uh, people that I watch their Let's Plays and also I am still doing Sims 3 and 4 Let's Plays on YouTube if you want to check them out and that channel is called Sock Bunny Sims. So uh, welcome and if you are new to this uh, podcast I really appreciate you spending some time with me and if you're a returning viewer as always thank you so 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 much. Um, it's been a while since I've podcasted. My depression has been pretty bad and my anxiety has been pretty bad. So it's just been a rough month. And uh, But in other aspects, it's been good. Rachel graduated from college, from the two-year community college, and she moved out. She's living in her own apartment. She does have a roommate. And she even asked me to make some dishcloths for her, so I did. And I gave them to her yesterday, so I don't have them to show you. But I did make her seven dishcloths. I posted a picture on Instagram if you want to see them. Uh, nothing too exciting, but I think it's high praise that she specifically wanted dishcloths because she's used to using them here, and they're awesome. So go knitting. <laughs> um, let's see. I think that's it. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about charity. Sock extravaganza, finished objects, works in progress, spinning, don't faint, upcoming events, fitness, stash enhancement, tips and tricks, what I'm watching and reading, and favorite things. So let's hop right into it. And the favorite things is going to be a big wow <laughs> to some of you. So you might want to stay tuned for that. Um, okay. So uh, first thing I want to do actually is some giveaways. We had a couple of prizes donated at the Sock Bunny Retreat, and I've given you guys lots of time to go and sign up for them, so I drew the winners. And uh, the first prize is this awesome, awesome Coca-Cola project bag by Rainstorm Studios, Christine, who is the sweetest person ever. And so this is her... Coca-Cola bag and her shop is at rainstormstudios.etsy.com and this is going to the person who wrote the following love poem to Coke. The poem goes, it is no joke to be awoke, I need my Diet Coke. And if that sounds familiar to you, you are Lucky number seven, Socky Knitter, who is Sally in Kentucky. So Sally, send me your address, and this awesome project bag will be on its way. Congratulations. And thank you to everybody who posted their love poems and so forth uh, to Coke. It was really fun to read. And you haven't, if you haven't gone to read that thread, and if you like Coke, you can go ahead and check that out. Um, the next thing, and that was in the Ravelry group, by the way. And the next thing in the Ravelry group, we had a thread where... Uh, you could go and put your name in to be in a drawing for this gorgeous, gorgeous, sparkly yarn. It's her Dewy Sock Base, and this is Daisy Knits. Let me see if I can get the card there. Her shop is daisyknits.etsy.com. And the winner for this one is number 10, who is Penny Schwartz, who is Penny from South Carolina. Yay! So, Penny, go ahead and give me your address, and I will send out this gorgeous yarn. Um, it's a little bit more blue than what's showing here, but it's gorgeous. It's got sparkles in it. So it is very, very soft. Let's see. Her dewy base is 75% merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. So there you go. So you guys, send me your addresses. I have a... 
I have a ridiculous amount of stuff next to me. I, in fact, I should pan around and let you guys see. I actually put a uh, laundry basket in the floor so I could um, toss everything over here, but I have a ridiculous amount of stuff next to me. All this stuff. Oh, hi, John. John. <laughs> How are you doing? And then stuff over here. You can see my messy craft room. Oh, we can see pumpkin in the window. Hi, pumpkin. Pumpkin. How you doing? <gasps> hi, Hansel. Oh, he's so adorable. All right. Yes, messy craft. Oh, and notice there's only one sock above me. Somebody knocked the other sock down. It was either Rachel or the cat. I'm not sure which. They're both guilty. So it's behind the couch here, and I just haven't had the gumption to pull the couch out and get it out. So if only Pumpkin would go in there and get it for me and bring it out. But I tried. He wouldn't do it. So anyway, I'm chopping off my body here. I don't want to show that much of my head here. There. Good. All right. It looks sort of like it's crooked. Wait, hold on. Uh, that's what you get for moving the camera. That's better. All right. <laughs> um, so that is the, those are those prizes. Now I also was giving away a free, my free, uh, a free copy of my, um, uh, Florida memories, fair isle hat pattern. And we had 24 people request the pattern and I was going to give it to 10 people, but I decided now this yarn is actually not orange. It's, it's pink. I decided let's get close. I decided to go ahead and gift it to everybody. So everybody who signed up in that thread got gifted the Florida memories, uh, fair Isle hat pattern. So I look forward to seeing all those hats knit and I also gifted it to uh, some, a few other people that I thought would like it. So, as everybody knows, I love my flamingos, which I'll be talking more about flamingos later. Obsession. All right. So, yes, I have this laundry basket down here that I am throwing everything in. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. Oh, I have been going through and reblocking a bunch of my uh, knitted shawls, so I'll be showing them over the next few podcasts also. Some of them go, you know, pretty far back. Some of them were gifted to me by other people and stuff like that. So, all right. Um, first, let's talk about charity. I uh, was contacted by Kay, who was Blueberry Chick, and she had a bunch of crocheted scarves that she wanted to know if I wanted to donate to somebody here local. And I said, yes, of course. So she sent me a box and I mean a box of scarves and I'm going to donate them to Pinellas Hope which is the local Catholic um, homeless shelter. So when I say a box I'm not kidding. She sent a box. This was jam-packed full like you could not have fit a single sc other scarf and I can't even show them all to you but I wanted to show a few of them to you. All of them are really really soft and um, I'm not sure what the yarn is that she's using. This one says bamboo and gold ribbon scarf. So it's just like a scarf that I think either a, t uh, a teenager or a tween or a child would like. Actually, I would like to wear it. I think it's really cute. I like long skinny scarves. So um, she sent a bunch of this kind, um, but I wanted to show you something different that she does on hers. Let me find one that has it on there. I'm serious. This box has a ridiculous, I haven't even counted, has a ridiculous, okay, here's one. Uh, this is a scarf that it says, uh, just says wool beaded scarf. But what she does is she um, puts beads at the ends, which is really cool, and I never would have thought of that. So this scarf has, it's really long, <laughs> it has beads at both ends. And she did that on a bunch of them. Let's see, this one is a wider one. So I just think that's really clever and really cool. And these are awesome scarves. And I showed them to Rachel, who is, as we know, not a knitter or crocheter, but she was like, she said that she would wear almost every single scarf that's in here. Like, look how cool this one is. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kay. These I know will be greatly appreciated. I think they're awesome. And thank you for all the work that you put into these. 
and these will probably I'll probably take them over like in October. They won't need them at least till October, November. Um, so I'll take them over that uh, there then. So for now, they're going to get stored here, which I will put them. Let's see. I guess I could put them on the floor next to me without offing the table too much. And she also has an Etsy shop, and she sent me a bag from her Etsy shop and you know I love it because it's got bunnies and the yarn is sort of hard to tell but the yarn is sparkly sparkly bunny yarn and her uh, Etsy shop is bead sisters b e d e sisters dot Etsy dot com I think it's on her and it is a really adorable oh here's her card oh there we go beadsisters.etsy.com and I love it. I love the inner lining as well and the really cute uh, be uh, zipper pull and I have been waiting to podcast before I use this bag so I cannot wait to use it now and I will be using it during Extravaganza for one of my many epic cast-ons that I will be doing so I love this bag. Thank you so much. It's very sturdy. It stands up on its own so this is cool. I probably I was planning on doing a color work pair of socks, so the color work ones might go in here since this bag is really sturdy and stands up. So thank you, Kay, for that. I really, really appreciate it. And John John likes it too. Yeah, I do. This, if you're a new viewer, this is my bunny John John. Hi! And he is sort of like the mascot of the show. Yes, I am. And I'm really getting tired of all the cat talk and all the flamingo talk. You should be talking only bunny talk. Look how cute he is. Hi, everybody. So uh, several people have requested to see him, so he decided to be on the podcast today. Hi, hi, hi. So Joe was being mean to him earlier and uh, putting this sun hat on him. <laughs> I think he looks adorable. <laughs> All right, so enough silliness. He's not going in the basket, though. You're going to sit next to me, aren't you? Yes. Okay. All right, so that is Charity. Uh, there's more charity talk coming up, but that will be in uh, finished objects. Okay, next let's talk about Sock Extravaganza. <clears throat> I did Sock Extravaganza two summers ago, and you might remember that. If you're a new viewer, it's really fun. Basically what it is, is an entire summer, June, July, and August, from June 1st through August 31st, you knit as many socks as you can, as many pairs of socks, and then we have awesome prizes. And I do need more prizes. I've gotten quite a few prizes already because I posted on Instagram a while back. I do need more prizes though because I want two or three prizes for each category if possible. So if you want to donate something, it doesn't have to be a project bag or yarn. You, I mean, those are fine. But I mean, if you do like hand lotion or or um, stitch markers or anything, even something non-knitting, uh, if you want to donate it as a prize, just contact me on Ravelry, Sock Bunny on Ravelry, and uh, there we go. So um, I will talk about what we've been donated so far and also the different categories. There's 10 different categories you can enter your socks into, so we'll talk about that. Um, so... Uh, in order to qualify for prizes in sock extravaganza, your socks need to be 50, your pair needs to be 50% or less done on June 1st. So as of June 1st, if you have one sock and you haven't started the second sock, that counts. If you have two socks that you haven't finished the heels for, like you knit them in tandem and you haven't finished the heels, I would consider that to be 50% uh, or less. So you can finish them. So if you have lots of works in progress or whips as we call them, if you have those hanging around, you can finish them during Sock Extravaganza, which is part of the reason I'm doing Sock Extravaganza, and uh, finish them during Sock Extravaganza and enter them. And you're going to be able to enter them in multiple threads. So I've already set up in Ravelry. If you go to my Ravelry group, Sock Bunny Knit and Fit, and look at the di different Sock Extravaganza threads, you'll see there are many, many. All socks go in the general thread. And then you can also add them to other various threads, which we'll talk about momentarily. They do need to be adult socks. They, uh, they can be tube socks because somebody did ask me that. They do need to be adult socks and they need to be completely finished, ends woven in and everything. And you do have to photograph them and some of them are going to be have to be photographed in a specific way. So, um, and 
Uh, I'm not going to be able to check the sock extravaganza threads every single day, but like every two or three days I will. So um, I will be policing the posts to make sure that they do meet uh, the standards for uh, the rules, as we say. So, um, but I mean, I'm not going to be like mean about it or whatever, you know, but I mean, some people just don't. Like last time we did it, there were people that just didn't understand what, what they were supposed to do. So that's totally fine. Um, so uh, first category is, um, like I said, the general category, all finished pairs of socks, no matter what they are, as long as they're adult socks that were less than 50% done on June 1st, go into the general thread. And um, we do have a donation already for that. I would like to get like at least four or five donations for the general thread. So if you have something, again, uh, I know I'm begging, but please <laughs> let me know and we'll uh, uh, put, your, put you down for a donation. But um, Alexandra McKenzie on uh, Ravelry is donating any bag of your choice from her awesome Etsy shop. And her uh, Etsy shop is spinningandstitching.etsy.com. And if you go to the general thread, I did link to her shop. So she's letting you pick any bag that you want from her shop, which is totally awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Alexander McKendrick, for that. Mackenzie, sorry. Um, second category. Now remember, you can put it in the general, and then you can put it in as many other things as it uh, does fits. So the second category is self-striping yarn. It has to be yarn that was dyed to be self-striping or if you want to make your own, if you have two different colors of yarn and you want to like knit two rows of one, knit two rows of another, and make your own self-striping, you can because that's still striping. It can't be variegated yarn that just happens to stripe. That is not allowed. So if you're going to use just one yarn, it has to be yarn that was specifically dyed to stripe. And um, if you're not sure if your yarn fits in this category, message me on Ravelry and we'll talk about it. Um, so the prize for that that I've gotten so far is any $10 giftable pattern on Ravelry, and that was donated by Karen, who is KSH number one, KSH one. So um, the winner of that category is going to get any $10 or less giftable pattern on Ravelry. So thank you very much for that, Karen. Uh, the next category is lace. And the prize uh, that was donated for that so far is, was donated by Lynn. I have it all in this big, giant uh, Outback, <laughs> Outback bag. Uh, the next, so the prize for that, let me set it over here. It was donated by Lynn, who is Sock Mom, Sock Mom 529. And she donated this gorgeous knit, knit picks. Um, I think I've knit socks out of this yarn. Actually, I think. Last sock extravaganza, I made socks out of this very yarn. And I'm pretty sure, I think it was the Kaizo socks actually. So this yarn knits up very nicely. So this is Knit Picks uh, Stroll in the Springtime Total. So that's gorgeous. And it's showing pretty true to color. Uh, so again, that was donated by um, Lynn, who is Sock Mom 529. And this is the lace category because I figured this would be good uh, yarn for lace. All right, so next uh, category is vanilla, and we don't have a prize for that yet, so if you want to donate something, I know, I sound like a broken record, but if you want to donate something, you can. And the, so the uh, lace category, uh, no wait, that was lace. Vanilla, we don't have um, any prizes yet, but vanilla socks mean no patterning. So you can have your ribbing on the cuff, and you can do, you know, whatever rib pattern you like to do on the heel flap, but the foot of the sock has to be plain stockinette, and the leg of the sock has to be plain stockinette. So no other patterns, no per no pearls, <laughs> no yarn overs, nothing like that. It just has to be plain stockinette. So uh, that is the vanilla category. Color work category, we had a prize donated from Deborah Tomasello. She is she has a amazing Ravelry pattern store and she has a lot of great color work uh, patterns, including a hat of John John. So if you uh, win that category, you're going to get to pick any pattern from her uh, Ravelry store. So that's great. So thank you, Deborah, for that. Uh, next um, is a fun category called sock pictures of socks being knit in public. The socks don't have to be finished for this one, obviously. If you 
are working on a pair of socks and you want to take them out and work on them in public, do it. It could be casting on in public. It could be whatever. You could uh, put them in a funny place or whatever. It's going to be random. So it doesn't. Ha it's not a contest for who takes the best picture. It's just randomly drawn. And so uh, socks knit in public, the prize, you're going to want to do this category for sure because the pattern, the prize is a bag uh, by you so and so. She wrapped it. Look how nicely. I haven't even opened it yet. But I did put a picture in the thread if you want to see it. But I'm just going to gently open this and try not to be too loud. It's so, so pretty. And I probably won't be able to get it back in as nicely as she had it in. But look how cute this bag is. Whoopsie. Dropped her card. Um, and I actually saw an ad on uh, Ravelry today for her, and it's uh, you so and so, and her theme, her slogan is "herding your projects together one bag at a time." So adorable card. You so and a n so dot etsy dot com. I did uh, link to her in the uh, thread, and this is the really adorable. Uh, it's got a little sheep zipper pull. This, this, there's a little sheep face there. That is like a really great detail. And it's just a gorgeous bag. And it does, it opens up and everything. I just don't want to like ruin how nice it looks. So that is really, really cute. And it's got a handle, which I love personally. So very, very nicely wrapped. Great idea. So that again is a uh, you so and so so thank you so much for donating that i really appreciate it it's really adorable okay and then next the next category is cables and or twisted stitches and the prize is uh, from emily of narwhal needle needlework and she sent two skeins of yarn and said i could pick which one i wanted it was a hard decision but the one i'm going to give away is this one which um i picked this yarn uh, as the giveaway because if you like to do cables you really want to do like a light solid or semi-solid so I think this would be a good yarn for cables so that's why I put it in this category and the, and this is her card narwhal needlework etsy.com slash shop slash narwhal needlework and then um, the, and this colorway is called antique rose it's very very pretty and then the one I decided to keep is called Good Vibes, and I'm going to be knitting socks during uh, Sock Stravaganza with this colorway. Yay! So thank you. I'm going to actually put it right over here so it doesn't get mixed in with the prizes because I'm not giving that away. <laughs> All right, so that would be cables or and or twisted stitches. And again, if you're not sure if your sock fits in a specific category, just message me and I will help you. Um, all right. Next category is socks knit from a book. It has to be an actual book. It can't be a, a digital copy of a book. It has to be an actual book. Like you can go to the library and get a book or you can get a book from your own um, personal library. And the reason I'm doing this category is to get people to knit from their books because I actually have sock books that I still haven't knit patterns from yet. So, which we'll talk about probably next episode. Um, so, it has to be a hard copy of book, and when you take the picture of the finished socks, the socks have to be with the book. So that's that's a little bit different for this category. Um, so let's see, where am I in my notes? Okay, so the uh, um, prize for this one was donated by Inner Yarn Zen, and she I like the way she wrapped hers also. Um, I don't know what the colorway is called because I didn't want to unwrap it just to find out. So I asked her and I'll let you guys know um, in the thread. But look how pretty that is. That is so, 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 so pretty. I didn't want to take it out of the packaging because it's so lovely. So that's from Inner Yarn Zen. So thank you very much for that. And next um, is the next category is little known sock patterns. And that's where fewer than 25 people have a finished object in Ravelry as of June 1st. Um, I did have the question, you know, what if a sock pattern goes viral? We'll be able to tell by the dates on the finished projects whether 
or not there were 25 or fewer at the time at June 1st. So don't worry about that. Um, but this is to, well, one, you could design your own pattern. And because that's a, pa a category I had before, you could design your own pattern. Um, then you know there won't be that many. Or you could just pick a very little known pattern or maybe one that was recently released. So uh, the prize for that is really adorable. And that is uh, this gorgeous sheet bag. Really, really cute. And this was donated by the Silver Shed USA. And she's Brody1959 on Instagram. And there's her. And she does have a shop, um, which I'm pretty sure I did link that in the group. If I didn't, I'll double check that. Um, but she also does have an Etsy shop or an online shop. I'm not sure if it's Etsy. I'll have to look. Um, but she's um, on Ravelry. She's Junkin' It, J-U-N-K-I-N, Knit. <laughs> so this is a really, really cute bag. I like the, I like the little black sheep. He's just so cute. Okay, so that is for the little known sock pattern category. And the last category is a really fun one. It's called Franken socks. And you're going to take at least 10 different scrap yarns. So this is good for you people who are doing um, sock yarn blankets. You might have some scraps left over from that. Um, so that is, if you use, you have to, for the pair, you have to use at least 10 different scraps from 10 different yarns. Garbage man's outside. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, and uh, if you're if you have any questions about this category, let me know. But it's really a fun. I've made Franken socks before. It's a fun, fun thing to do. And really, the less the yarns go together, the prettier the socks will be, or the more fun they will be. Just like a sock yarn blanket. And I'm pointing over here because mine's here, which I'll show you shortly. Um, so the prize is also from and from the Silver Shed. AKA junk in it. And I love this bag. There's one, it's a cat bag and it's really cute. And she's got this awesome strap on here. And the inside is super nice. This would be perfect for taking socks in public. And there's this one cat on here who I love the most, this green one right here, the look on his face. <laughs> oh, these cats crack me up. And that orange one right up here. <laughs> Uh, I'm easily abused. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so this is for the Franken sock uh, category. So we have some awesome prizes so far. And again, if you want to donate prizes, please, please, please do. And please let me know. And again, it doesn't have to be yarn or project bags. You can donate other things if you want to. So think outside the box. All right, so that is Sock Extravaganza. You could start now. You don't have to wait till June 1st, as long as your pair on June 1st is less than 50% done. So if you want to cast on socks now, totally go for it. If you have socks that are almost 50% done, you can get them up to 50% done, and then on June 1st, go crazy. That's a week from Monday, so it'll be here before you know it. Um, so I think that's what, all I want to say. A couple of disclaimers. You do have to be a member of the Sock Bunny Ravelry group to enter your socks into the um, prize threads. Um, you do have to watch the podcast to find out if you won. So my first podcast in September, I'll draw the winners. If you don't watch, you don't find out you won, you lose because I'm not going to hunt people down. And the part of the reason I do this is to get viewers. Duh. So, and also because I love you guys. So, um, you do have to watch the podcast to find out if you won. If you don't claim your prize in 30 days, I am going to redraw another winner and give that prize to them because I think people who watch the podcast deserve the prizes. Um, and you'll have 30 days. So that's plenty of time to watch that podcast. All right. So let's talk about finished objects. As I mentioned, I did do the dishcloths for Rachel. So that's one I don't have them show because I gave them to her last night. She was like, I was like, you can't have them until I show them on the podcast. She's like, please. All right. So I gave them to her. Uh, next is something that's going on uh, mainly uh, through Instagram, but she did contact me directly on um, Ravelry. Uh, so this is Minnie Pearl Girl is her name on Ravelry. She's IROC Knit's daughter, Corey's daughter, and she is collecting hats for, um, uh, 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 what's it called? Click for Babies. Oh my gosh, my mind totally went blank there for a second. So she's knitting, uh, she's collecting purple hats. It's for a school project for Click for Babies. 
So um, and this uh, podcast might go long. I really, really apologize. I normally don't like longer podcasts. I don't like watching longer podcasts, but sometimes it can't be helped. Um, so I do have quite, I did, I did six hats. Um, this one is really cute and it's knit in a new yarn I wanted to try, new to me anyway, Heartland by Lion Brand. I highly recommend this. This is a, an acrylic. So that's one. I'm trying to go through these quickly. Um, this is Red Heart Gumdrop. I love this yarn. I want to do an entire blanket out of this. They have, set, they have I think, like eight colorways that are all, I think I'm like a toddler in real life because I love bright colors like a toddler would love. So that's this cute hat made out of that. I'm trying to go through these really fast. And then I also did some out of um, Karen Simply Soft. So this one is a, oh, I haven't woven in the ends on that one. Good to know. Because uh, they're going out in the mail tomorrow. I better do that today. Um, this one I crocheted and I did like a little scalloped border along the bottom. And it's really cute either folded down or folded up. And that's uh, a Karen Simply Soft variegated colorway. I think. No, wait, that was still the gumdrop. That's the Red Heart gumdrop still. So it looks completely different knit versus crocheted, right? <laughs> And then um, this is uh, this is the Karen Simply Soft Variegated. This is a crocheted one, just a plain beanie. And again, it looks cute with it up or down. And so I did a crocheted and a knit version with that yarn also. And lastly, this is actually the first hat I did. This is Karen Simply Soft. This one turned out really small. I think it might be preemie size. I'm going to send it anyway. Uh, but this one's crocheted, and I just think it's adorable. It's got like this little tied on bow there. So basically, you, you crochet this flat, and then you seam it, and then you crochet a chain, and you put it through, and then you gather it at the top. So I think this is adorable, but I just thought it was really small. That's why I only made one. So those are the six hats, and again, they're going to be mailed out tomorrow, hopefully. And that was a really fun project. I always like doing that kind of stuff. And I think I'm just going to dedicate this bag. Um, this uh, was uh, gifted to me a long time ago by This Mom Knits. Um, I think I'm just going to dedicate this bag to being my purple hat bag and just do purple hats throughout the year. Because every year somebody is doing some sort of collection for purple hats for Click for Click for Babies. And that's, if you don't know what it is, I'm trying to put it down without falling over. If you don't know what that is, that's to help uh, prevent shaken baby syndrome. So good cause, definitely. All right. Another finished object is my um, yarn that I had purchased at uh, Rhinebeck 2013. I got their, uh, the Socks That Rock uh, Little Bow Peep colorway. It was the, the Rhinebeck 2013 colorway. And I, had, I couldn't decide last time you watched whether I was going to do a Bactus or a Multnomah. And I went with the Multnomah. So it was a hard decision, but here you go. And it turned out fabulous, if I must say so myself. And I love it, love, love, love it. I love the colors. And actually, I have a shirt that this is going to go perfect with. Um, Girl Dale had uh, gifted me for my birthday a Dalek t-shirt. And it's pretty much these colors on the Daleks. So I'll be wearing it with that. I haven't woven in the ends, obviously. Uh, but I love, love, love how this turned out. And I talked about how I had problems with my first Multnomah. And I definitely was not the only one. And if you want to go in the uh, thread for the last episode, you can see uh, Made in England posted her Multnomah that she knit just recently. And it's gorgeous. Also out of Socks at Rock, I believe. So I'm super happy. I can't even show this whole thing. It's definitely a shawl lead. It's not a, a full size shawl, but I really, really like it. And I pulled out, because as I said, I've been uh, reblocking some of my older knits. I did pull out where I have done this um, other than my first disaster with it, which I actually frogged my first Multnomah because it turned out so badly. Um, that was a long time ago when I was a new knitter. But I made one out of a Zalber ball one time. And I love this because, you know, pink and green, I love. 
So I do have another Zalber ball and uh, in the in this very same colorway. And I've been trying to decide what I'm going to make out of it. I'm thinking maybe a wingspan. If you've ever seen that shawl, I think that would be good. So there you go. Finished shawl. Love it. Um, I don't know why I'm talking weird like that. Okay, so that's Multnova. Love it. Um, and that's a free pattern. So if you're interested in knitting it, go for it. It's definitely doable. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is I think the reason I had problems with it, because even now reading it, I was like, what? It's sort of wordy the way she tells you what to do. And so what I end up doing is uh, on the back, I flipped it over and, and for each row, rewrote it in the way my brain works. I, I don't know. This would have been a good one for, you know, how I've shown you before using the index cards for each row would have been good for this pattern. But anyway, um, and I saved that piece of paper because I have a feeling I'll be knitting it again. I don't want to have to, you know, rethink, reinvent the, reinvent the wheel. All right. Works in progress. Quite a few works in progress. First one, Rachel's graduation socks. They're not for Rachel, though. They're for me because she doesn't wear hand knit socks. Crazy girl. Uh, but I started, no, I didn't start these, but I did start them to work on at her graduation because, you know, you're going to be sitting there for a long time. I was away from home that day for like seven hours. It was ridiculous because I took her early and the traffic getting out of there is, oh, is insane. So anyway, I got quite a bit of knitting done on these. Um, I'm on the second sock, but they're not to the heels yet. Yeah, well, this one's to the heels, and I actually have it in my uh, my uh, DPM protectors. So, <laughs> oh well, that's under the computer. I'll get it out in a minute. Uh, this is the first sock. This is Patton's Croy. The colorway, I don't know why, is called Spring Leaf. That does not make any sense because this doesn't look like a spring leaf at all. Sp sp spring leaf stripes. So first the sock is to the heel, ready to start the heel. And the second sock is uh, almost there. I have probably about 10 to 15 more rows before I can start the heel on that. So I'm trying to get it to where uh, I can stop and then pick it up again on June 1st. So. I am loving these socks, and I do like, I don't really like gray, but I do like gray with colors, so, and I have this in my Rainstorm Studios bucket bag that I purchased at the Sock Bunny Retreat, and I love it because it's got like superhero sayings on it, and then uh, on Mother's Day, uh, Rachel and I went to the mall together near her new apartment. She moved over to an apartment in St. Pete, so she's like an hour away from me, but that's okay. Um, and she bought me a couple of buttons. She got me a Batman or badges as they call them in England, I think. And then this one is from the Emperor's New Groove. My favorite line from the whole movie is where he says, bring it on. If you've seen that movie, it's after they fall. Well, look, right before they fall over the waterfall, he's like, are there lots of uh, sharp rocks and sticks at the bottom? And the guy's like, yeah, he's like, bring it on. I love that movie. It cracks me up. If, you, if I need to be cheered up, if I put the movie on, I'm guaranteed to laugh like a little kid through the whole thing. It's just so, so, so funny. Emperor's New Groove. Go watch it. All right. So that is work in progress number one. Number two is my mitered square sock yarn blanket. I actually have it in a basket over here because it's so big. And I've done quite a few squares since you've seen it last time. A couple of notable squares also. I've been doing a square a day, except for the last couple of days I haven't. But I have been doing a square a day. And I keep a calendar in here. And I just mark off each day as I do it. So you can see all the ones with the little uh, stitch markers are the ones that I've done since you saw it last. So I think I've gotten about eight rows done on this. I think it's 12 squares wide because I want to fit Basically, it's going to be a lap blanket, but I want to fit a twin size blanket, but it's going to stay out here in my craft room for when I'm knitting. I can sit with it on my legs. So this one is made from the yarn from the Little Bo Peep uh, colorway that I made my Multnomah out of. And I have a microscopic tiny ball of yarn left, enough maybe to do two rows on a sock yarn blanket. So I got my money's worth out of that yarn. <laughs> And lots and lots and lots and lots of beautiful, um, this one is sparkly. And it's actually made, I mentioned it before, but I didn't have it with me to show. 
but I had told you I had bought some things called bonbons at uh, Joann's. They have them at Joann's and Michael's. Um, I happen to get these um, on sale, but they're by Lion Brand, and you might have seen them in your Joann's or Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and they come um, eight to a pack, so you can see I've used three of them. I can get, I'll be able to get four squares out of these, but I'm going to knit two squares out of each one and then give the rest to Girl Dale because we've been sharing scraps because she's doing a sock yarn blanket right now. And where are the, oh, here's the, uh, the other three. So as I knit them, I'm putting them in here. Once I've done two squares, I'll give the rest to Girl Dale. So, and I have quite a few scraps. Oh, and I wanted to point out another special square. Susan from Desert Vista Dye Works a few years ago had dyed a John John colorway after my bunny. Hi! <laughs> she had dyed a uh, colorway for John John and I did a big square. I've been saving that yarn forever because I knew I wanted to put it in this blanket. So special. This is I actually probably will do like three or four big John John squares in this blanket because I think I have enough. At least three I have enough for. So that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite squares. And another one of my favorite squares, I know I'm going on and on about this, is my Star Trek yarn from Fiber Nymph Dye Works. Love. And it's sparkly. So I have lots of favorites in here. And this is definitely a memory blanket because a lot of the things in here are uh, favorite yarns. So, all right. Uh, oh, and I also want to mention that Life Full of Laugh on Ravelry contacted me and she created a new uh, Facebook group for swapping mini skeins for the blanket. So if you want to uh, contact her to find, or you can go visit her on Ravelry, Life Full of Laugh, or you can just go on Facebook and probably search for mini skein group. Um, I can't join it because I am not on Facebook anymore and I don't miss it. I have so much more time. I'm, that's why I'm getting so much knitting done. So I'm not spending my time doing ridiculous Facebook and other stuff like that. Um, all right. Next is the February Lady Sweater. This is in my bag that I won at the Sock Bunny Retreat from Denise, who uh, her shop is Kiki Boo Bags on Etsy. And this is the February Lady Sweater. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's based on the Fabu February Baby Sweater from The Knitter's Almanac, which I highly recommend this book. It's an entertaining read, and um, it definitely has some great, great patterns in here, one of which I will be casting on soon. She has a pattern for a square shawl, and I'll be doing that, uh, and it, which is not pictured here. Uh, but I wanted to show you uh, the February Baby Sweater. It's this little tiny, tiny blue sweater there. That's what this um, big sweater is based on. So for this, I am using Lion Brand Cottonese, which was gifted to me by Girl Dale. And the colorway I'm using is Popsicle Blue, which I love that name. I'm on the third ball, I believe. Pretty sure. I could be wrong. I think, yeah, I think I'm on the third ball. The second ball had two knots in it. Not happy about that. So I think I'm on the third ball. I could be wrong. But anyway, <laughs> losing my mind. This is, it's knit from the top down. Very simple pattern. Uh, um, if you can, I wouldn't say a, a very, very new beginner knitter, but an advanced beginner could do this. Um, I really like the lace. I'm going to show you the back because it's easier. But the lace on the bottom, I really like. That's the gold lace pattern. It's a very easy, and basically from here on out, I'm just knitting. It's a four row lace pattern, and I'll just be knitting that the rest of the way down until the sweater is as long as I want. And then I'll just, on um, the sleeves, you could uh, leave them, you can make them long. I think the pattern has you doing like three quarter length sleeves. I do not need that in Florida and this is cotton anyway. I'll be wearing it in the summer. So I'm just going to be doing like maybe a couple of uh, lace repeats on here and binding off or yeah, that's probably what I'll do. I've already done, I think one, I started the lace on here. So 
I like it. Um, a lot of people close up these uh, eyelets or don't even do the eyelets. They just do knit front and back, which I probably will do next time. But I wanted to follow the pattern exactly this time. And I will be knitting this again because it's a fun, fun project. I can only do a few rows a day, though, because when I knit heavy uh, projects like this, it hurts my wrists if I work on them too much. So I do like four rows a day when I work on it. So I am loving that. I love everything about this project. I really like the yarn. Um, the needles I'm using are Nurse Pride. Um, they're very nice. So very happy with that. Next is my um, May, May socks, which are not going to be socks. And also that Multnomah was my April socks, and it wasn't socks. So I do draw a sock bag every month and do patterns out of it, uh, make something out of it, but it's not always socks because, as you'll see, I have a ridiculous amount of socks. So for um, May, I decided to do um, something a little bit different. I'm actually crocheting it this time. And this yarn, I lost, misplaced the ball band, so I will have to look and see what it is. This was some striping yarn that was gifted to me a couple of years ago. Well, actually, more than that now. Uh, but what I'm doing is I am crocheting little granny squares. And as you can see, I've got only gotten four done. <laughs> but I'm crocheting little granny squares. And then I'm going to uh, stitch, uh, seam them all together and make a long, long, long uh, summery scarf out of it. So that is that. Very easy. Just a plain old granny square. So. I'll probably have enough either to make two scarves or have a lot for my sock yarn blanket. And that's in my Coca-Cola bag from um, Rainstorm Studios, which I love, you know. If you're new, I am a Coke addict. <laughs> the good kind, though. Um, and that was a size F crochet hook, by the way. And then lastly, oh my gosh, I told you, since I'm not on social media, I've been getting so much more done. Um, this is also a Rainstorm Studios bag. <laughs> And I bought, well, John John, my bunny, bought me this yarn for my birthday this year. This is Ella Ray yarn. It's Ella Ray Pompey, or I guess it's Pompey, P-O-M-P-E. And yes, it's kid yarn. It was in the kids yarn section. <laughs> I told you I'm a toddler, right? So I decided, well, first I was going to knit a scarf out of this. But these pom-poms are pretty heavy. So I'm actually crocheting. And what size crochet hook am I using? A G, G crochet hook. And so I first started knitting and I got like this far into the scarf and realized that it wasn't working because uh, the uh, pom poms are heavier than they look. And look, it looks like a little bunny tail. And um, they, they were like really sagging down. So I figured uh, crochet has more body to it. Um, so I decided to, I want to do a long, long skinny scarf notice the theme here. So I cast on, our, well, I, I'm hooking, crocheting a pom-pom scarf. <laughs> I know a lot of you would never wear this, but I would wear this, will wear this. So it's ridiculous, but it's me. <laughs> I showed it to Rachel yesterday and she's like, oh, that is definitely ridiculous, but you. Look, it does look like little bunny butts, you gotta admit. There you go. So I should rename this the bunny butt scarf. And winding this into a ball, I had, I like sat on a chair and put my knees up and I put this around it. And winding this into a ball is harder than it sounds. Because you've got like the pom-poms and you have to wrap the yarn around the pom-poms. And then as you're like uh, unwinding, you have to like lift all the pom-poms to get the yarn from underneath it. So don't do this when, um, you haven't had caffeine. Also, Pumpkin, my cat, never bothers my yarn. Never, never, never. But when I was uh, winding this, he was sitting here next to me. There's like a console area with cup holders. And he was sitting next to me, and all of a sudden he got really fascinated and actually grabbed this yarn. He's never done that before, so he definitely likes the pom-poms. So I have to keep this put up in a way because he might run off with it. <laughs> Which would be my own fault if he did, because I shouldn't be leaving it down anyway. Okay, so that is my pom-pom scarf. Believe it or not, that's all the works object, and this is almost an hour long, so I'm going to try to go faster. Uh, spinning, I did spin some fiber that I purchased at the sock bunny retreat from uh, Daisy Knits. I've, I have done, um, this is two ounces, the other spool spin, oh, what's this thing called? <laughs> that's so long. It's been so long since I've done spinning. Um, anyway, 
I've, I have spun all of it and I just need to ply it, but I wanted to show it to you. Yes, it's been forever since I've done spinning. And then, um, okay, upcoming events. We have a woolly trot coming up, which D Girl Dale and I signed up for, and I did get my bag. And it's a virtual 5K, meaning everybody just runs the race on their own, and then they post their uh, post their um, times that it took. Um, and then, then there's, she's going to have random prizes and stuff like that. But this is the bag I got, and, yes, it's bright orange. And, yes, it's actually as bright as when I first showed it. That's how bright it is. So... And Dale hates orange. She got a pink bag. <laughs> I love orange, so I had to get an orange bag. So I love that. And that was organized by Sarah, who is Rain Lover. Sock Extravaganza is June, July, August. The Sock Bunny Retreat is going to be February 4th through 6th. I will be start, starting to take signups August 1st. And in July, I will post the information. So it, the, like around the first week of July, uh, you can start looking for the uh, information about the retreat. Um, fitness. We have a fitness along in the Sock Bunny group. Um, every every day that you work out at least 30 consecutive minutes or do 10,000 steps on your pedometer, you could do one entry per day in the fitness thread, and the winner gets to choose up to a $10 giftable pattern or multiple patterns that add up to $10. So I drew the April winner. We had 189 posts and 19 participants, and the winner was number 87 who is Nitty Barb and she posted 22 workouts and she won just a few months ago so you can win as many times as you enter so Nitty Barb let me know which pattern or patterns you want congratulations and along the fitness lines I did rejoin the y, uh, YMCA this week and I will be starting to go to spin class again because I've missed it I haven't gone in like a year and a half and I was like totally addicted so I want to get totally addicted again um Stash enhancement I did want to uh, share with you very nicely. I mean, I've shown other stash enhancement already, but um, uh, Lynn, who is Sock Mom 529, donated some mini skeins for my sock yarn blanket. And so I just wanted to say a big thank you for that. And if anybody has any yarn they want to donate, I will take it. Thank you. And I do share with uh, Girl Dale. And I just dropped those. The cat's probably going to find them. Okay. Let's talk about um, tips and tricks. The tip and trick is how to drink more water because I've been really hyper focused on drinking more water over the last few months. I know it's an area I needed a lot of work on and I can tell a difference in my skin when I drink more water. So it's a beauty tip as well as a health tip. Um, so I want to share my ways that I get myself to drink more water. Um, if you've watched before, you know I love my Tervis. In fact, I have a Flamingo Tervis here. I have a Coca-Cola Tervis, I have a Broncos Tervis, and Sarah had a Tervis that she was never, not using, so she gave it back to me. Um, this one, uh, which is the kind that actually, it has a spout, and you can just drink from it this way, or you can put a straw in it if you wanted to. So the thing I like about the Tervis is they are insulated so they don't sweat. So that's number one for me is I have to have a cup that doesn't sweat. If it sweats, it drives me crazy. It drips every time I pick it up. It gets on my knitting. <laughs> so I that's why I like the Tervis. I also like the Tervis because it has a handle. That is a big difference for me, especially when I am taking it out in public. It's easier to carry. Like if I go to a theme park, I went to Bush Gardens yesterday. And I took this and I'm able to carry it around by the handle. So that is a big deal. I like the fact that they have optional straws. Uh, the lid, you can drink directly out of it if you want to. Well, I don't want to spill. Um, so um, in here right now, I have lemon juice and water. So I have water and then I actually got this idea from Denise because this is what she does. Denise from the Knitting Den podcast. She uses this lemon juice from Concentrate. Yeah. So she uses this. I'm sure you could use the generic brand just as well. And Walmart has bigger bottles of this. I got this at Target. They don't have the big bottles but Walmart does have the bigger bottles. This doesn't even have to be refrigerated. So, um, cause nowhere on here does it say refrigerate after opening. I triple checked that. So, um, I just, uh, put a few squirts of this every time I fill up my water. So in my refrigerator, I have a Brita filter that I just keep, Brita pitcher that I just keep filling. Every time I use it, I just refill it. So the water's a little bit cool. I actually could drink room temperature water too, but, um, since I'm here at home, 
I uh, fill this up, I put a few squirts of this in there, and I've been trying to drink at least three of these a day. Yesterday, I drank five of these because I went to Bush Gardens and it was hot and very humid. Um, so that is one tip. Get a cup that you really, really like. You might have to experiment with different ones. Um, before I started using the turvis, I was actually using red solo cups and a straw. So, um, cause they don't seem to, I mean, they sweat, but I don't know, for some reason, glass glasses seem to sweat more for me. I don't know. It's very hot here in Florida. So sweating is an issue, obviously. Um, another thing you could do, which I just started doing, I saw this somewhere on YouTube. Somebody was talking about how to drink more water. And what I have done is I filled this with water and then I put a couple of tea bags. So you could do like green tea or a lemon zinger or some sort of tea that you like. Just put a couple of tea bags in here, let it sit. I let mine sit for an hour, but I'm sure you don't have to let it sit for that long. And so it steeps and then that's one way to flavor your water. Another way to flavor the water is to put fruit in there or cucumbers. Um, a lot of people will like put frozen fruit in their uh, water. I am not a big fan of doing the fruit. Um, before I, oh, my phone's ringing. I think it's Rachel probably. Yep, I'm just going to ignore her. Uh, before Denise told me about this, I was actually buying lemons and cutting them up and putting them in there because lemon is the best way to get me to drink water. So I'm just basically saying experiment and see what works for you. Um, so other ways to get yourself to drink more water is to set a timer on your phone, like drink every hour. Uh, make yourself drink some. Or um, another thing you could do is um, drink during commercial breaks. So if you're watching TV, every time a commercial comes on, make yourself drink some water. Uh, another thing is every time you go to the bathroom, refill your water and uh, drink more water. That's another way to remind yourself. And um, another big, big thing for me is I take my turbos pretty much everywhere I go and I embarrass my family. I take it into restaurants with me. <laughs> And I order ice water, and then when I leave, I take ice water with me. I get them to refill it. Sometimes I even hand it. Like last time I went to, where was I? I think I was at, I don't remember now. But I was at some restaurant, and uh, the server was really nice. So I even just handed him my terms. I said, can you fill this with ice water? He was happy to do it because he wanted a tip, you know. So I do uh, take my terms everywhere. And it's good. I can actually leave this. If it has ice in it, I can leave it in the car when I go shopping, when I come back, it's still cold because it's insulated. So basically take your turbos everywhere with you, uh, which is another good reason to get maybe this kind. <laughs> that actually, you know, you can put a carabiner on here if you wanted to and hang it on your backpack or however you want to do it. Those are my tips. If you have other tips or tricks on drinking water, please do share them in the uh, either the comments down below on YouTube or in the Ravelry group in this uh, episode's thread, episode 136, and I will share them on the podcast. Um, so that's tips and tricks. Um, oh, and while we're talking about flamingos, I notice I'm wearing a flamingo hat. This I had I bought this hat at Bush Gardens yesterday, um, and I was standing. I posted this on the Instagram. I was standing by the flamingos and I had my flamingo turvis I was wearing my flamingo hat and I was taking a picture of the flamingos and the guy next to me whispered to his wife hey do you think she likes flamingos <laughs> I was laughing so hard I, I would like didn't make a face or anything while he was standing there because I didn't want him to be like embarrassed because I overheard him saying it or whatever because I think he was like joking around with his wife uh, but I just thought it was really really funny so yeah I think I, I think she likes flamingos um, okay so what am I watching and reading reading uh, I've been reading um, I mostly read like spiritual type books lately uh, I'm reading a book called 33 Days to Morning Glory, which I'll talk about when I finish it. It's my second time going through it. So I'll talk about that on a di different ep episode. Um, I finished watching Star Trek Voyager, and I'm re-watching Star Trek Enterprise because Girl Dale is watching Star Trek Enterprise for the first time. She's never watched Star Trek before, so she's definitely hooked on it. And I asked her if she's a Trekkie, and she said she's an Enterprisey, but I think she's going to be a Trekkie very shortly. Um, favorite things. Now this, I told you this was worth waiting for, right? Favorite things is my box of socks, which after today is not going to be a box of socks anymore because it's, I have too many socks. It's going to have, they're going to have to move into a drawer because my drawers are bigger than this box. But 
Uh, this is a box that Joe got me for Christmas a few years ago. Oh, heavy. So this is one of those boxes that you see like at Tuesday morning or Michael's or Joanne's. It's a decorative, really pretty box. And it opens like this. And inside, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Inside are my hand knit socks. And this isn't even all of them. <laughs> And of course I've given away a lot of socks, but you can see I cannot fit another, I mean, unless I do a second layer, which I don't want to do. Um, yeah, I have a ridiculous amount of socks in here. These socks probably, let's see if I dump it. Yeah, they won't even fall out. They're jammed in there so much. So this is one of my favorite things, my hand knit socks. I love them so much. And I've even gone through and tossed some socks that had like felted. There's a couple of yarns that I will never buy again because they felted. Um, I won't say the names here because that would be mean, but um, I do love, 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 love this box of socks. So the box will be repurposed for some other project. Uh, I'm not sure what. Uh, and the socks are going into their own drawer now. It's just too much. They're too big. So that, I believe, is it. Yes, that's it. Oh, my gosh. We're right at an hour. I am so, so, so sorry. I really apologize for it being so long, but I had so much to talk about and so much to show. So uh, don't forget to enter the prayer request thread on the Ravelry group. Um, you could do, you can say what your prayer request is, or you can... Um, uh, just say you have an unspoken prayer. And I do pray for the people that watch the podcast and the people that post in this thread. And don't forget to enter the fitness threads. So I hope you have a great week. Keep on crafting. Bye.